Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. We have got a hell of a guest for you today on 67 Hail Hail. A big guest. We're speaking to Johan Mialbe, signed by the late Dr. Joe Venglos in 1998. Johan would go on to spend six years at Celtic, becoming a big part of Martin O'Neill's defence. As a player, he won seven trophies at Celtic, including three league titles, as well as a runners-up medal in the UEFA Cup. As assistant manager, he added another five trophies, including the first three of an incredible nine-in-a-row run that obviously ended last season. On top of that, he scored for Sweden in the opening game of Euro 2000 and captained Sweden at the World Cup two years later. Not a bad career, when you put it like that. Johan, how are you? What, what are you up to at this moment? I'm very well, thank you. Uh, thanks for having me. Uh, right now, I'm actually, uh, right now I'm in Stockholm, Sweden, which I'm not always, you know, I'm a jet set, I'm all over the world. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, uh, but right now, yeah, and the weather is quite all right for being Sweden at this time of the year. Uh, so uh, uh, I'm doing a wee bit as an ambassador for a, a betting company, uh, and I watch a hell of a lot of football. Uh, obviously, following Celtic as a as a Celtic supporter, I've probably watched you know I, I've probably caught you know like seventy five eighty percent of the games this season. Excellent. Um, j just going back to your career briefly, is is there one moment in your your Celtic career that gives you the most pride? Uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, it, for me, it's always been all about winning, you know. And and if you are a part of of Celtic, you need to obviously learn that even if you don't play well yourself or the team is not playing well you have to learn how to win games so it's all about winning trophies uh, so obviously the treble you know under martin o'neill martin o'neill's first season you know that was a uh, incredible transformation uh, you know a bit like uh something is is going through right now you know uh, and uh, uh, that's obviously because it was all about winning trophies that the treble is the, the proudest moment you know but the all titles are nice in a way you know uh so so but, but it's been a lot of highlights you know uh, during my career at celtic yeah and i'm obviously far too young to remember much about that martin mm -hmm. o'neill team so it's what about a more recent one from your time as assistant manager uh no definitely obviously the 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 shock when we beat uh barcelona in oh, the champions league uh that that is it was just an incredible uh feat in a way uh, yes we rode our luck sometimes you know but what was really nice and and, and gave us a lot of pleasure was that both goals were probably you know from the training ground maybe not the the, the obviously the counter-attack when tony what scored the, the, the winning goal but you know the first one was uh, uh straight from the training pitch you know uh, because we, we we practiced you know a, a few few corners and free kicks uh, uh, before that game because we knew we wouldn't have too much of the ball you know so it was all about obviously trying to score from a set piece or, or a, a counter-attack we could spend the next half an hour chatting about that game alone. It's one of the best I nights know, of my I life. J j just in one short answer, what was the key for us that night in winning that match? Uh, no, obviously it was a, a, a couple of keys in a way. But uh, obviously your goalkeeper, he needs to have a word, which Fraser Foster had. We ruled our luck, you know. I mean, they, had to, they hit the, the, the woodwork a couple of times. Uh, but it was all about being really focused and, and disciplined without the ball because we knew they would have so much possession you and this was a really really strong barcelona side as well you know so uh, all about you know trying to make sure that uh, make sure we didn't obviously make the mistake of following messi in all all the time in the pockets you know you know uh, and, and making him open up gaps you know for others you know to exploit so, so it, it was a great, great, obviously, team performance. But like I said, Fraser Foster, you know, a great goalkeeper. But I, I'm, I'm hardly can I uh, think, do I think that he's ever had a better game. Well, the the cup final against Rangers, he was incredible as well. But he, yes, he, he true, was, true, true, true. He, he was just true. Di different level that night against Barca. Yeah. Um, a few people will know this. Um, you've had a go at management in recent years. How did you find that? And could we ever see you rocking up in Scotland in a manager's job? <laughs> uh, no, no, not really. Uh, no, obviously, I really enjoyed obviously working with Neil and especially at Celtic, you know, because that was just coming back to 
the level I was used to and a, a massive, massive club that I love, you know. And uh, it was so difficult coming back to Sweden and, and, and having a go, especially in the lower levels and lower tires. It's, you know, uh, uh, obviously it's, it's no money at all. Uh, most of the players are not professional. And, and uh, it's, uh, it's a different generation in a way as well, you know. So, so I actually, for a while, fell out of love, you know, of, of, of football in that sense. You know, I, I didn't really enjoy it, you know. But that was, in a way, my own fault, you know, because I really enjoyed Celtic, you know, in management. And, and uh, obviously a year at Bolton as well, you know, before I decided to go back to Sweden. Uh, so it's probably down more to obviously that uh, when you're used to obviously being part of such a uh, such a massive football club and, and where it's a lot of uh, interest and, and fan base and, and, and you can do something, you know, and it, it's, it's, it's to the level where you, you're always been at, you know, Th then it was a bit of a shock for me to go down, you know, and, and work with players that uh, really didn't know the game or understand the game. You have to go back and becoming a teacher again. And maybe I wasn't really prepared for that, you know, so, so, yeah, I will always love football. I was full of football, and, and I watch more football than ever, you know. But I'm I'm not going to go back into management, especially not in Sweden. You never know if something else comes up. I'm just holding out hope. Henrik Larsson gets a Celtic job in a few years' time. He calls you up oh, as your God. As I need to give him a ring then. <laughs> <laughs> We'd love to see it, but yeah, no, excellent. Um, what what have you made of Ange Postecoglou at Celtic so far? Uh, no, I, obviously, like like everyone else, you know, uh, I'm so impressed, you know, about this transformation, you know, because uh, remember it was doom and gloom, you know, last season, you know, and and uh, and actually at the start of the season, it didn't look too well, you know. It took a while, you know, before obviously his ideas came through. It, it was obviously a new place coming in uh, and so on. So, so you had to give him and the squad time. Uh, now, uh, the transformation has been absolutely brilliant. You know, I, I, uh, I don't think many of us thought that we would sit here now even thinking about the treble, uh, which is, you know, incredible, you know. But a, a really key thing is now when obviously he got a, a, a number of players in that he knows, uh, that he knows is loyal to him, the way he wants to play the football, the uh, uh, so much energy pace which is the way he wants to play it you know the celtic way really being really really and very attack minded you know uh, but you have to give a lot of credit to the manager where we are right now definitely you know uh, uh, very impressive you, you obviously work, worked under a, a lot of really good managers you know in your career but especially at celtic would you have enjoyed playing under postacoglu no most definitely you know i think it's a, He's a strong character. Uh, mentally, he looks to be, you know, uh, uh, in a good place, and, and uh, he really loves Celtic. And he's born to, in a way, to be in a Celtic manager in the way he wants Celtic to play, because that's the way the supporters wants to play as well. Being very attack minded, on the front foot, going forward. Yes, we've seen, you know, flashes where. It's not going to be suitable to do it, maybe especially in Europe. But let's let's leave Europe for now. This is just an unbelievable good good season. Make sure we win. Hopefully, the league, which is probably is, is going to be the most important thing now when we are in driving seat. But uh, winning the league and then think about Europe, you know, because we've, we've been a bit too open, a bit naive in Europe, you know. But uh, the way he wants to play it, it's perfect. And and. Uh, uh, I personally think that, you know, uh, I don't think many of us thought, oh, who's this guy, you know, really? Obviously, I knew the name. I knew that he had been in Japan and obviously Australia. But, you know, uh, it was still a wee bit of a gamble, you know, to to, uh, to bring him in, you know. But fantastic, perfect. You, you say that it's the perfect way of playing. But if, if you'd have been playing in the team, would, would you have fancied the ball at your feet, you know, from the goalkeeper at all times? uh maybe not you know obviously football has changed yeah uh, from my time you know it, it's it's always going to be a profession a progression in sports you know uh, but it, then if you put it if we if we had trained the same way and and uh, uh obviously 
had the same uh, you know setup and and all the sports scientists that you have now then obviously we wouldn't be too shabby either you know because uh, we had much more experience outside in our team you have to remember do uh i would say that martin had much more money to spend as well you know and obviously the current manager you know uh, and it was probably a stronger character in that side but, but forget about that you know that that is just a, it's always going to be progression uh, uh, and today all footballers they need to be quite you know uh, comfortable on the ball regardless of what position you play you know but it, even at times you know obviously you need to mix it up a wee bit you know because you can even see today's barcelona when Xavi comes on you know they've changed it a wee bit you know now they don't always play you know uh, through the midfield and up to the strike it's just that the tiki taka football they they can be a bit more cynical and obviously play in behind as well you know which is important you know because otherwise other teams are gonna just read through you yeah, I mean, Celtic have got, you know, a way of playing, but I, I think we're kind of yep. versatile in matches as well. Now, assembling a new Celtic squad to challenge for the title is something that you've been involved in as a player under Martin O'Neill, um, also as a, a coach with Neil Lennon. These kind of first seasons, when you've got a whole new group of players, for me personally, are, are the most exciting supporting Celtic. I mean, that, I know we didn't win the league, but that 2010-2011 season, you know, was incredible that the excitement yep. in that season. Obviously, there was stuff going on off the pitch as well. But what is it about these first seasons that that makes them so memorable? You know, as a as a player or as a coach. No, I think it's uh, first of all, if if you coach or especially the manager, obviously the manager is obviously the one uh, driving it. Uh, mm. uh, uh, it's important for for obviously the manager to obviously ha that he has a clear idea how he wants to play. Mm -hmm. and 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 with that clear idea obviously bring in together with all the scouting department and, and obviously they are quite important nowadays obviously the scouting departments that you really really get in the right players uh, that can play obviously specifically the way the manager wants but secondly you need to learn as much as you can about the players well because obviously they need to be characters that can to gel in in the dressing room you know uh, depending on it, do you need strong characters in or is it maybe more low key ones because you already have strong characters in the dressing room uh, etc you know you know uh, but but it, i think it, it's sometimes we forget you know because we watch football we, we watch obviously the team plays on the pitch but we forget how much work it is behind the closed doors you know and obviously how important the scouting department is you know and and uh, that's why it was so nice and and obviously me being happy to see when obviously Ange uh, brought in you know players that he definitely knows better than anyone else you know uh, because i mean that's just uh, for me the first big big step that you're going to be have the right players coming in and is recruitment just the most important thing then it is you know obviously it's important that the time you spend on the training pitch but uh the overall picture i would say recruitment is for me by far the most important thing you know because these players are already you know really really good footballers so you don't need to also learn them how to pass the ball how to defend in a sense it's more important that when they come in okay you can give them two three months but they need to be ready to go straight away you know get you know be ready to get thrown in straight in in the heat and a mix of it and when you signed, you know, players off the top of my head, like Ledley and like Kayal and, you know, Mystorovic, um, could you tell? Oh, yeah, yeah. Mention, Van, throw, in, Van throw in Victor Wanyama Van then. Dijk. Van Dijk. <laughs> Well, when these Maybe guys the came in, and a half in the world. <laughs> oh, when these guys came in, could could you tell right away? You know, can, can you tell within a you know a training session that this guy's going to cut it? Yeah. Uh, maybe not the first training session but uh obviously the the time and obviously the the how much you really focus on getting the right place in it's very seldom you don't know everything about them you know uh, because obviously the manager uh the coaches the recruitment uh side of it they've already watched this play you know uh, whoever it is you know so many times so you know what you're gonna get then though i will throw in that not all not everyone is going to become a success 
because you will never ever know even if they play down in england in other countries celtic is a massive massive club and not everyone is is made to cut it you know because you really need to be strong uh, mentally because i've played with a lot of players that were really really good uh, really talented but they couldn't really understand that you have to win every single game you know it doesn't matter if you you, know, you travel up to ross county mns and it rain sideways and, and the, the the tactic doesn't work you, you your game is not working you need to find a way to win it and that's quite mentally tough if you're not used but if you survive it if you go through it then you're going to be able to deal with anything in life very interesting. Um, let's chat about Carol Starfelt then. Uh, I think I'm right in saying you worked with him at youth level. Uh, your son played with him too. H how do you think he's done at Celtic? Uh, no, Carl, I didn't really work with him. You know, my son played with him uh, at youth level. Uh, he's he's gone under the radar a wee bit. Uh, he obviously came through a Brahma Poikana, who's, who's the, the biggest talent uh, factory in, in, in Stockholm and in Sweden. You know, he's a lot of young, really, really hot superstar coming through there uh, and then he went to 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 Gothenburg but quite quickly he, he obviously signed for a Russian team you know so so he disappeared a wee bit went under the radar uh, obviously when Celtic signed him uh, I wasn't too sure because I hadn't really seen that much of Carl uh, at that time you know uh, he he had been you know in a, in a couple of Sweden squads but never really played you know uh, so uh but obviously you know uh, fingers crossed you know i thought he had a wee bit of a rough start uh, i have to say uh and it surprised me uh, to a wee bit because you, i mean you always would need to give a, a player's time you know to to gel and 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 get the atmosphere and all that you know but he's probably the one who wasn't signed to be a france beckenbauer if you know what i mean to be a ball playing and a half that's not his game his game is to defend to win his challenges, to win his uh, 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 headers and be really solid, uh, you know, defensively. And at the start of the season, he didn't really do that. You know, mm. he, he looked a wee bit uh, shaky. He didn't really get it going, you know. So, so I was a wee bit worried there for a while. But here is where you have to give the manager so much credit. Because it could have been easy to just bring him out for mm. two, three games. He didn't. He gave him confidence to play him and after a while you know i think it's been really really solid lately you know it's great partnership with ccv uh, and, and you know so it looks really good you know now he's doing what he should do pass the ball yes do that but don't do anything spectacular spectacular but defend be solid defensively and if you are you know you will always play martin neil told me one good thing you know because obviously you know when you're playing well and you have a couple of good games, you know, you, you get a wee bit cocky, you know, and I started dribbling with the ball, you know, from the back now and then. And Martin told me, you know, the gaffer told me, and he really simplified my game, you know, which obviously made, made it quite easy for me to understand, you know, this is what I have to do to, to play. So, Johan, Johan, don't dribble with the ball, you know, just give it to the better players. Just give <laughs> it to the guys who can play and take players on, you know, but defend with your own life your penalty box, block everything, head everything. If you do that, you will always play for me. And I think he's getting and better then I tried to that do as it. well. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You, st you stopped dribbling, did you? You stopped that? Yeah, I did, I did, I did. <laughs> But, but Star, Star, <laughs> Starfield, you know, he's coming out with the ball a little bit more. Obviously, it's a yeah, different yeah. team now to the Martin O'Neill yes. team. And he's yes. quite, he's actually not bad at finding the passes out to the left-hand side. And I think he's getting more confidence. And that will come from the manager, as yes. you say, keeping him in the team, even when he was going through those difficult periods. That must be yeah. great for a player, having that faith. It is, it is. And that's why, obviously, I think he's, he's, you know, his confidence is sky high now. You know, he, he knows he's... he's uh, He's one of the first names on the team sheet, you know, because uh, uh, the manager believes in him. Uh, I think it's important for Arns to have a solid partnership in central defence because he knows, obviously, the danger we will have so much possession in games, especially domestically. Uh, so the danger will always be either set pieces or the counter attack. So have two guys who really know each other uh, with the, obviously the fullbacks as well, you know, uh, it, it's really important, you know. So, so you have to give the manager a lot of credit, you know, to 
to uh, keep faith with Carl and let him play his uh, way in to really be a solid member of, of this squad. And I think he is now. You know, yeah. because you see, we we don't concede that many goals. I think we look better when it comes to defensive set pieces as well, because that was a wee bit of a headache for me when I watched Celtic last season. And and, and even even you know a couple of seasons before that, I thought we were we we've been for a number of years been quite poor when it comes to defensive set pieces. But it looks looks better now. So so uh, and that's going to be important for us, you know, to to, to win titles. Yeah, he's become a big player for Celtic, yep. Starfelt. He's continuing this wonderful Swedish connection. Himself, <laughs> Magnus Hedman, uh, Dan Mastorovic, John Gadetti, Mikael Lustig. Yeah. There, there may be another one as well. Have I forgotten someone there? Possibly. I don't know. The King um, of Ka Kings. <laughs> of course, Henrik Larsson. <laughs> um, I mean, pretty much all of those guys, including Larsson, contributed yeah. a lot to Celtic. I mean, these Swedish players like yourself, they come in and they very rarely don't contribute yeah uh, no i think we are it's it's quite easy for for swedes and scandinavians to uh, uh to really as gel into the, the scottish lifestyle and, and the way i mean it's it's not too dissimilar you know to sweden and and uh, i mean if they have the same experience as me you know i love scotland i lo love glasgow i love the bus of it you know they have a a city where football means so much uh, and for me but i'm a bit crazy i love it you know they obviously that you have to win things you know because obviously it was times for me as well you know when, when, when things weren't going too greatly you know and you need to be strong then you know but it, when you have supporters that care even when they're not happy means that you're part of something special you're part of a big big club so uh, i think it's easy for we, we're quite strong mentally as well you know scandinavians you know and, and most of us maybe not the king of kings uh, we knew that we were workers in a sense yes obviously contributing but knowing that uh, we weren't stars but if we played well we were very very important for the team yeah, been a huge part of, of the last 20, 20 years for, for Celtic. You know, up until recently, Mikael Lustig was, you know, a yeah. massive Celtic player for years. Yes. Are, are there any other Celtic players this season that have really caught your eye? Uh, oh, I, I mean, most most importantly, the, the team is functioning really, really well. You know, it looks like the, the atmosphere, you know, between the players are, are, are great, you know, strong, you know, got a strong bond. Uh, uh, and obviously it's, when things are going your way, it's quite easy to be a footballer. It's when obviously when, when, when you're hitting, you know, and, and they already gone through this because start of, at the start of the season, they, we were struggling a wee, wee bit, you know, it, it, it took a wee while, like I said before, you know, to get going. So it shows that they've already gone through that. And now they, they know they have a golden opportunity, you know, to, to go all the way and, and, and win the league. Uh, and that is that that is really important uh i, I have to say uh so so but, but it's a lot of it's, it's great to say great to see obviously the, the the greek god that everyone calls him the, the, the new greek god obviously samaras is the original yes oh sammy sammy i worked with yes sammy was incredible when he wanted to uh, uh, now but it, it's great to see this strike you know because something we don't have without him is probably a bit strength and power in the box and with him, he's got a great leap. He's strong, you know. He, he, his confidence is now coming, coming back, you know, and he, he's scoring goals. You know, I think that's uh, uh, one of the the last wee pieces of puzzle, you know, for for the manager to, to really go all the way, you know. Uh, but but apart from him, obviously, you know, all of the Japanese plays have been uh, been really impressive, you know, and and really really strong, you know, and and they knew exactly. Uh, how the manager wants them to play and the team to play, which helps. Uh, so, so, no, definitely, you know, no. I, I, I also think the, that Joe Hart has been a great signing uh, because you need an experienced goalkeeper there, you know, especially when a team that hasn't got, you know, uh, that much experience, you know. Uh, I think it's really good for, for Celtic to have a goalkeeper like Joe Hart, you know. Uh, it's it's been solid, you know. He's been there when when needed to, and, and don't and we still have obviously a, a captain. Even if Scott Brown left, 
Callum McGregor has stepped in and, and he's, he's, had, he's, he's had a wonderful, you know, Celtic career, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm so happy for him, you know, he's, he's gone, the, he went the long way, you know, because obviously he had to go out on loan to Notts County mm. during my time when I was assistant. Yeah. Uh, uh, and he came back, you know, stronger than ever, you know, and, and, and that is, you know, it's, wow, all credit to Callum. Yeah, wow, indeed. Um, right, so we're at the start of a big week ahead of the Rangers game on Sunday. You've experienced this as a player, as an assistant manager. What is training like in weeks like this? Do, do you notice it going up a level? Uh, n definitely, you know, uh, the intensity, yes. But I think it's important, you know, it's not you're not going to change anything because they already have the winning formula otherwise Celtic wouldn't be sitting first in the top of the league uh, so, so the winning formula is there I think it's more important for the manager and the coaching staff to just uh, uh, try to make sure the players don't think too much about this this massive game yes it's a very important ga game but don't change the way you play the team right. plays it's it's more about you know I think it's more on the outside for us, you know, now being a supporter and like I am, you know, for us to, that we read all, all the, obviously the media is going to the build up and, and, and all the support and, so, and I think it's more for us in a way, you know, on the outside that we get caught into this, you know, who's going to play and how, how is the setup going to be, which is the form team and, and all that, you know, uh, so for the team, and in the atmosphere around it, uh, 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 the players, I think it's more important, yes, don't change anything. Just go with it, you know, obviously the way every player plays and obviously the team plays, you know, and, and don't think too much about it. Uh, just to treat it like a game like the rest of them, which is difficult because it seldom is. Yeah. That's interesting. Um, a daft question I've, I've always wondered when, when you're watching training happening on these kind of weeks, c can you tell, or not tell, but do you have a decent indication of how the match is going to go? Can, can you ever look at training and go, we're going to get a result this weekend? No, you never know. You can, you, yeah, obviously you, you can have a gut feeling, you know, and, and I think... Uh, I think obviously the manager, I, I, I can only go back to myself, I think you feel you always believe in your team you always believe in your players uh, uh i always believe when i was a player that we would win you know otherwise there's no point you know uh but it's it's more important to obviously maybe pick up the <clears throat> the small things like who am i going to come up against in my position uh, and i really know the way does it turn off more often to the left or to the right? If I'm a, uh, if I'm a center half, I play against a striker. Am I midfielder? Which way does it turn more or less? Because then it's easier to win the ball if I can obviously know that he usually turns to the right uh, and so on. But but believe in your own strengths and and and, and the way Celtic plays football. I think that's going to be really important coming up to this game. You know, and, and obviously it was a great result last time around. Yeah. In terms of other stuff that goes on in these weeks that people watching this might not know about, is there anything else you remember? I know there's reports that the police often come into the dressing rooms, you know, in, in the lead and, and, and tell you basically to, to keep a lid on things. Is there anything else? Uh, no, it's always a, a yeah, quick meeting. As a player, I didn't really, you know, I sat and thought about other stuff, you know, and because obviously it didn't really interest me, do you know what I'm saying? I was there to, to, to do a job and obviously to do my job, you know, for the team and I think about that, you know, so, but, but, but obviously it's, uh, it's obviously advice from obviously police that you obviously don't, don't go and celebrate too over jubilantly, you know, and, and so on. But, you know, in a way, we don't do it. You do. It. I mean, you're always going to be that happy if you score a goal, you know, for your teammates or, or for the team. So, so uh, I think that no, that's not an issue, you know. But uh, uh, the thing that goes most on is it's. But you have a game plan, uh, and obviously that's going to be built in, you know, uh, from Monday when you start training up until the game. You know, small small things. It's not going to be tactical sessions every every day that's not going to happen here because you need some intensity in it as well you know but uh, 
the team and the players they know exactly how the manager wants us celtic to play then obviously you need to think about the other team as well you know how they're going to set up you know that's why i said that uh, it's important to just listen to the coaches or, or find out yourself or watching videos you know who you're going to come up against as well to, to make sure you you win your match in the game your match in the match and if you do that you know it's a bigger chance you're going to be successful yeah was there any advice you either heard or gave out about playing at ibrooks my first game was an old farm game i signed on mm. a thursday i try, trained on friday morning i was thrown in some a saturday at three Carl starfield style thrown in exactly thrown in straight away just to get on with it but uh, like i said that's why i saying you know obviously the, the when i knew that i was going to play you know a couple of hours before kickoff you know uh, it was important for me to, to obviously get to know the rangers team as soon as possible uh, who was obviously the strike and, and so on you know uh, so so sometimes you just have to obviously for me that night it was just to play a wee bit more safe you know and obviously uh, because i didn't know my teammates you know i had only had one training session you know a really easy light training session before obviously uh, stepping on to to celtic uh, celtic park you know and the pitch and, and this incredible atmosphere and and, and uh, uh, suddenly i was nervous as hell <laughs> and in terms of you know when you were coaching was there any advice to the players about playing at ibrooks you know keep it tight early on uh, no uh, first uh, uh, what you do do because it's a special game you know it's it's uh, let's not uh, kid yourself you know uh, because we, it means a lot to the players it means a lot to the team it mean, means a lot to the supporters uh, it is to sometimes you know in these games you know uh, the quality uh, goes away to a certain degree because it's really important you know for the first 20 minutes you know really show that you're up for it try yeah. to win every challenge you know that you can do you know the 50 50s and and, and get the, the upper hand in that sense you know because you know all the players they know they can play football but try to win the battle as well you know if you do that you have a really good uh, good chance to dictate the game you know and, and because they, they're quite even the two sides as well in a way you know so it's important if you can win that battle as well you know that then you're going to be stronger mentally than the the, the, the opponents yeah well fingers crossed for sunday um final question johan the, the hardest question yeah. how do you think it's going to go no i definitely think we're going to win uh oh I, yes I, I don't see any other reason than to believe that we can win you know obviously i think a draw will be a good result in a way but obviously it's no way we, i mean Celtics going to go into the game not believing they can win or you know but obviously if, if it turns out that we not play LA get to the hundred percent level, then obviously a draw will will be a good result. But I'll I'll definitely think we have a good chance to win. So 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 if you ask me right now, I say two one Celtic. I and love it from my heart, but what I believe as well. Excellent. Are, are you going to get to see the game? Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely on telly. Yes, I'm going to see it. I'm going to watch it on telly in Spain. Oh, it's a tough life you've got going over to Spain. <laughs> I don't know how you manage. Mm, me neither. It's been brilliant to have you on, Johan. Really do appreciate it. I know people watching this will be delighted to see you doing well and, and all that. So all the best. Thank you. And you too.